can do anything if you put your mind to it. I mean, outside of like, like flying, like flying. Like. Hi, I'm Zachary Fowler, and you're watching 87 Days, the complete reenactment of all I did out on History Channel's Alone show, season three. But as if I did it here in Maine, with the resources I find here, how I do it differently, and how I'll do it differently next time should I go out again. And today, we're building a reed boat. Let's do it. All right, so, out there on alone, I, I was gonna build a boat, you know? I'm a boat builder. I've been building boats for, since I was 18, I came to Maine and went to boat building school and I got out there and I'm like, oh, look at this bamboo I can make. Just like a reed boat, but out of bamboo. The stuff turned out to be solid, sank right to the bottom, wasn't an option. The driftwood that I found and the other woods that I found were very dense. They didn't float very high in the water. The buoyancy was very low and I, I was like, it was, I just didn't see it as being worth my time. And that's when I dreamt up the uh, Duck Hunter 3000 to paddle out there and, and try to do some of that stuff the boat would be able to do for me. And you can see in my sketchbook here, I had an idea of building like a, a three pontoon boat, you know, that out of bigger logs, but we weren't allowed to cut trees down over a certain size, so that just wasn't, it wasn't a possibility either. And uh, it just seemed like that would be a lot more work than was worth it, and the amount of, um, it, uh, fish that I'd catch more off of that because I was already doing well catching fish uh, wasn't worth it. So since I didn't get to build a boat there, I'm building a boat here. All right, I think I'm gonna go like 12 feet on the water line. So the longer your boat is on the water line, the less it draws, meaning the, the less it, it sits shallower in the water. And that allows you to travel faster. So I'm gonna go, mid-range. Now some of these reed boats traditionally I've seen they're like six feet long and the ends are still turned up and they're still like in a five and six foot pattern. They're very short, very stubby. This one I'm gonna go for about 12 feet on the water line. Might end up actually being 13 feet because the front and back are gonna be turned up about three feet of uh, length. And uh, it looks like that's a good choice because when I look at the reeds as I lay out two sets of reeds they overlap in the middle by about that much the long ones do. So I'm gonna start laying them out in a staggered pattern, some full length one end to the other, and then some in the middle. And it's gonna create like a football tapered shape, of course, over a longer distance. And I'm gonna make two of those that are the base of the boat. I want something that's good and stable and good and long on the water line so that I can take it out into the ocean, do some fishing there. It, the lakes are already freezing over so it doesn't look like I'm gonna be doing any lakes. It's gonna be an ocean test on this boat when we're done. So I don't know if you noticed, but I'm using my battle horse today. It's just sometimes when a sheath knife, you know, I like my folder and my Swiss Army in my pocket, or my multi-tool even, but it's just sometimes when a sheath knife, you know, it's just so nice, especially when you're doing lots of lashing or something like this, pull it out and I can nip all the seed heads off and uh, good to go. I got an idea. So if these are good fire starters, what's a whole lot of these gonna do if I throw a spark on it? Last time I said watch your beard if you're gonna spark these things up. Let's see if I can't do it with my Wazoo survival bracelet here. Well, that wasn't nearly as eventful as I was hoping it would be. But they do have a lot of moisture on them. But it shows, goes to show you, even in the winter time, just even with snow droplets frozen all over them, boom, they spark right up. 
also makes for good, for good, uh, you know, getting ready for a night hunt, you know? You're gonna get out there and darken up, you know? So you don't give away your position. So interesting fact out on a loan before when we're getting ready and they're telling us all the stuff that we're allowed to bring and not allowed to bring. People were complaining and saying that we're not allowed to bring sunglasses. It's gonna be winter, if there's snow, it could be a serious issue, snow blindness. And uh, the first thing that come to my mind is like the old Indian book that I got in my book collection with uh, like four different ways to make sunglasses or no, no, sun protection, you know, carving wooden glasses with a slit so you only have a small amount, um, brims, like a hat brim of things, um, and then darkening above and under your eyes to cut down on the glare. And uh, last one was horsetail. I think that's a Mongolian one with a horsetail across your eyes with the hair and you look through uh, horsetail hair as it's wrapped around the top of your head. <clears throat> Alright, so that's all set. I need to make some saw horses now. That's why I got these sticks here. I don't want to sit around in the snow, keep working on this. I want to be able to tease this thing and tighten it up. These strings that I put on it right now are just temporary to hold it together. So that way I can put it up on the horses. I'm gonna make two tripods, set it onto the tripod as my saw horses, and, uh, and then I'll be able to work the line around it in a better fashion that ties off good, won't slip around. around and then between to pull the lashings together. All right, let's set this thing up and see how it works. I'll make a second one now. All right. I had it roughly tied up, and then I just tied it again by tying a, a bowline, running it through the bowline, the line, bringing it back to a trucker's hitch, and then just looped around it all the way up to right where I'm gonna start the turn up at the end, where I'm gonna bend the end of it up. And I did it that way, and then there's another trucker's hitch at the other end that I can undo and then tighten back up. Because I want to, I don't want a permanent knot down here until I've cinched it up. So I'm going to cinch up that trucker's hitch and work my way down the line pulling any slack out if I can until I tighten this bundle right up. I'm building a yacht. That's what I should title this video. Read Yacht. Oh, this is gonna look so awesome. Look at that. Only one time around of cinching. There's no droopage. That's solid enough as it is. I'm gonna go around a couple more times like working some more slack out of it till she's good and tight. And, uh, and then I'll turn the ends up. Who's your daddy? So doing this reminds me a little bit of the Japanese bow. I don't know if you guys have seen a Japanese bow. But Japanese bows are actually a pile of, traditional ones are a pile of bamboo tied together to create the bow shape. And then they have to be tuned. So just like this, I bent that up. And while the pieces are loose and able to slide past each other, I'm able to bend this up and then when I tie around it and tie it all together and bundle it tight, the pieces won't shift past each other and it'll remain in that shape. Some of it will probably, once I take the strings off, it might relax a little bit. But I'm pretty sure I got it 
enough that I'll get it all the way up and the sweeping up the way I want. So the Japanese bow is the same thing, put a picture of it here, and it curves in these different shapes so that when it's drawn, it holds a certain shape. So they lay it out on a jig and then they lash it together in different places that, and then it remains holding that shape. And over years, traditional ones have to be taken back in by a professional bowyer and they have to be tuned back up. I'm gonna lash this together and undo the string and see how, how much shape stays in it. I think too, the closer I keep these ones together, the, the wraps, the more likely it is to hold its shape once I'm done. Wow, I thought it would relax a little bit, but it didn't even move at all. I'm still gonna take and probably pull a little more slack out of it, tighten it up a little bit more. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, I got it pretty good. Sweet! Look at that. Both strings are loosed. She's still got her nice shape. This still needs to be tightened up a bit. And now I gotta work my way that way. Whew! A lot more project than I thought it would be. But man, this thing is gonna be awesome. All right, the first one's ready to go. I got the second one laid out and roughed out here. Weather's moving in, so I might be out in an angry sea, who knows. But I'm gonna get it done, I'm taking this thing for a ride, so you guys can watch this Christmas Eve one way or another. I'm going for it. I've refined my, my uh, rope, my cinching tool down a little bit, made it to a little bit of a pick on the end, and uh, Nothing special, I just kinda, that way I can get in there when the ropes start to get tight and continue to get another turn on it where I pull on it and bring this around and then yank again, then bring it around, yank again, keep pulling all that slack out of it. And it really brings a bundle down. You can see a big difference between this one. It's like, you know, barely fit my arms around it. And that one over there, I've gotten it down to like this diameter here, so. And which is a very important part of holding that shape to it. And holding that shape to it when I get in the water, the whole thing doesn't just roop and I just, sink in so if it's not tight I could end up being like that with both ends of the boat up around my ears. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that. Pick it up. Doesn't even flex. Yeah so much for the illusion of doing this out in the woods. That just ruined it huh? No I'm doing it at my place in Union. That's my house. Big old farmhouse. But I guess if you haven't already figured that out from the uh, the sound of the cars and stuff, it sounds like a highway on the audio, I don't know why, but. Something's going down. Hope everybody's okay. There's been a lot of accidents down the road for some reason this year, before the snow even started flying, so. It's like 17 degrees out here right now, so. So it takes a little bit longer. And it's looking good, man, is it looking good? So I keep refining my little tool for doing this and pulling it tight. I had a little bit of a hook there to the end of it so it hooks up so I can get under that line as it's tighter and tighter, get it free, 
and uh, because once I get around it, and both of them tied together, I'm gonna come back through one more time even on this last line, pull it, and then stitch in the end through some of the reeds and tie it off, because right now they're, so that the, the, the line can't untwist. But at the same time, I can pick the knots clean in the springtime after these dry out a little bit more, and cinch them down some more and tighten the whole boat up. That way, I keep it for as long as possible. Big adventures next year. I want to have big adventures. I want to take a whole canoe trip. They're just running the rapids in this uh, river down here in the St. George in the spring. I want to run the rapids, uh, run the river with everybody else on the river run in the spring with this thing and uh, maybe even take a trip across the ocean. Not the entire ocean, but maybe like out to Matinicus Island or something like that as a cool adventure. Throw a sail on it for the day and sail out or something neat, you know, neat stuff. Tactical retreat. It's snowing a whole bunch. I still have a lot to do. And I want to finish this thing. I'm gonna go work on this in my kitchen. <laughs> if I was out in a survival situation, obviously I wouldn't have a kitchen to work on it in. I'd have to like either keep going or flip it over and wait until the snow settled and work on it again after the next snowstorm, sweep it off. But I got a house and a kitchen, so I'm gonna cheat this time. That's what I'm using for line, if you're interested. The bank line. And I used the slightly smaller stuff for wrapping it, but this is a slightly heavier stuff for putting the two parts of the boat together. I have some of this bamboo left, a couple hundred chopsticks from Patagonia. And uh, so I just made one into like a bamboo sewing needle to stitch some of this stuff together. Got the boat, made it, I'm working on it for like two weeks now. I'm trying to get this done before Christmas so I can bring this to you guys. Christmas Eve day. And I got it, it's done. It's looking beautiful, I'm excited. A little nervous. I mean, I have complete confidence in my skills, but at the same time, it's, it's just so, so wild. Time for a, uh, an exciting new segment. We call it, Will It Float? Will It Float? Without further ado, let's take her and put her in the water and see what happens.
a beautiful, beautiful day for a paddle, huh? This reminds me of being out in Patagonia. I'd sit on the edge of the dock while it was pouring out and just, it was just such a gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful experience. Snow and rain. I love it. Every time it snows or rains, I always come out and play in the snowstorm or play in the rain. Alright, maybe not every time. Now that I've become a, a person who lives in a house and not a yurt in the woods, I cheat sometimes and just stay indoors. What an awesome year. What an amazing year. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for this year. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jesus. Merry Christmas. It's raining awful hard out here. Just starting to get damp. My fall raven pants. They get kind of wet, but they absorb the water and then shed the rest. Nice warm long johns and stuff though, I don't feel cold. What a beautiful day. I think I already said that. Cold steel kayak paddle, the bomb. The bomb. Just me out here in the ducks. Me and the ducks. Well, and my buddy who's running around trying to shoot some B-roll and shoot me while I'm out here paddling. <laughs> We're the only two people crazy enough to be out here though. Everybody else is hiding. What a bunch of fools. Missing out on God's creation being out here in beautiful weather. I wish I could just keep going. Just keep going. But I got a little family waiting for me at home. Two beautiful girls. Want to spend Christmas with their dad. So. I guess I'll have to turn around at some point here at home and edit this so you guys can see it tomorrow morning. Really pushing the boundaries of <laughs> filming and getting a video done, huh? What an amazing year. Oh, we're getting some chop! Getting some chop! Oh, I better not goof around. I end up in the drink. It's pretty stable, but man. They get side on the way those rollers are. Holy cow. I say rollers. But there can't be much more than a inch swell going on back and forth, is it? I mean, it's this cold and wet out though. I feel awful precarious. Although, this water is so much warmer than my jump in the drink last week. Or two weeks ago now. When I test out the survival kit. Wow, that was cold, let me tell you.
It is beautiful out here, isn't it, guys? thing steers like a dream. I feel like it tracks perfectly straight. It doesn't uh, it doesn't turn exceptionally quickly. Um, it doesn't uh, I feel I'm crossing a current right now so I have to paddle a little more on one side than the other but uh, when I wasn't it's extremely stable. It's uh it stays straight. It doesn't feel like it's trying to go left all the time or right all the time. I really feel like I nailed it in that aspect. It's, it's straight enough. You know, if the lines underneath the water line was uh, off center in some way, then I'd always be paddling four strokes on one side to one on the other kind of thing. But that's not happening at all. It is, it works perfect. It works perfect. See how fast I can get her going. That might be dangerous. Well, she's not gonna win any races necessarily for speed. It doesn't exactly up and take off, but I'm not exactly using the biggest paddles either. adventure this year has been the most amazing year a new home for the family so much to be thankful for all the views that you guys have given me shares likes comments interaction people that I've met at trade shows and well, I'm telling my story about my adventures in Patagonia and talking about new adventures with people people sending me fun gear to play with cold steel is just just given me so much this year um, uh, battle horse every all kinds of amazing people you know warrior pouches with the slingshots simple shot slingshots everybody has just has been so amazing working with all these new people starting a whole new life by becoming a you know investing in myself to become a full-time youtuber and live my dream of just making whatever I want to make whenever I want to make it and that's what this this boat is. It was a dream of mine to build this boat in Patagonia and have have a boat like this as part of my adventure, something I could paddle around and fish other spots. There wasn't any reeds there, but now that I'm home, I've made my dreams a reality once again, and I can't wait for next year to make more of my dreams realities. So many adventure ideas I've had over the years, and now I feel all the more confident that I can do it. Uh, they can be done. You put in the time and the effort. Mom wasn't lying. You can do it. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. I mean, outside of like, like flying, like super flying, like you know, maybe someday. But ah, uh, that's it. I'm back. This is this is the dock. I'll see you guys in the new year. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for liking. And uh, yeah, see you next time. Fowler out. There's a good outtake. The GoPro getting dragged off the bottom of the boat as it comes into the rock. The clip's broken. Oh. That's cool though, the GoPro case is fine, it's fine. That's legit.
It's like, from now on, I'm not just gonna have one cold steel shovel with me, I'm gonna have two just in case I need to make a paddle. <laughs>